Up next, we're gonna talk about the new normal. What does that even mean? What is normal? Programmatic has become part of the marketing mix for major brands. And up next, we have the senior vice president for the Asia Pacific and Australia regions, which will talk about his daily media consumption routine, as well as his thoughts on why the programmatic ad buying um, trend has become such a force when connecting with customers. Please uh, join me in a round of applause to welcome Mr. Matt Hardy. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Matt Hardy. Um, I work for a company called The Trade Desk. And what I wanted to do was walk you through a day of my media consumption to be able to paint a picture of how targeting and how use of media has changed and basically do a little bit of uh, have an idea around that. So I'm going to walk you through a day in the glamorous life of somebody in the advertising business. So I start the day in the morning at about 6 a.m., by 6.25, I'm already doing email, and this is my first exposure to media. My first exposure to mass market media happens um, at about 7.55, um, and when I walk to work. So when I'm walking to work, I'm exposed to out-of-home media. Um, I, see the same, um, I see the same billboards in and out every day. Then, basically, I move on to looking at the news once I get to the office. After that, I check LinkedIn to see what's going on with my network. Then when I head into the afternoon, there's more email. Yes. After the email, I check what's gonna go on with um, you know, my business travel over the next couple of months, a little bit more mass media. Then I check what's going on with my deliveries. Then I look at some investment information. And all that time, we have radio playing in the office. So there's some uh, mass market radio stuff that's playing as well. At night time, I get exposed to out of home again as I'm walking home, and then I stream video. Um, I use a VPN to get hold of Hulu, I use a VPN to get hold of HBO, and I've got a Netflix subscription here in Singapore. So if stuff was all available legitimately, it would be much easier and it would be a good way to do that. All this time, I'm playing Spider Solitaire. I play games of Solitaire while I watch television and get exposed to ads there as well. And then cap off the day with even more email. So what was the point of taking you through all of this? It's sort of like a lead up to a bad joke, I guess. Um, to target me, I was on six different devices during that day. Um, I was on basically, um, I was on using a phone for the mail in the morning. I was on a tablet um, during the evening mail and playing solitaire. Um, I use an Apple TV to get hold of the streaming stuff, except for Netflix, which I, because it's not on the uh, VPN, I need to use a different device for it. Uh, for work, I use the same phone, I use another tablet, and I use a PC. And that leads us to, uh, to, to the, I don't actually consume as much media as um, people tend to think. I mean, I think the old catchphrase is you look at three and a half thousand different messages a day. In my own analysis, I don't really look at that many. Um, I probably get about 35 um, email impressions um, for commercial mails. I don't open 99% of them. Um, when it comes to the outdoor, I'm probably only exposed to about 16 different ads and they are in very, very low rotation. So I get the same message over and over again. Um, when it comes to websites, I probably see only a couple of hundred email, uh, only a couple of banners that are in view. And when it comes to the video stuff, I want to play the game, so I skip the videos. So, and with TV, it's a moot point because I stream the TV, so the TV ads I get on Hulu are American TV ads. So, um, if you look at it here, I consume almost no traditional media. Um, except for the radio, except for a bit of outdoor, I don't consume any print, I don't consume any terrestrial television. So, can I, just, just as a matter of interest, how many people here watch terrestrial television at home? Can you put your hands up if you do? We got one, um, two. Uh, how many people stream media at home? Okay, well that's everybody, w wonderful. So, okay, so the thing is, the bulk of money being spent on advertising is still going on TV. Um, and I'm fine with that, but as long as it's the right TV. 
as long as it's TV that's being streamed, as long as it's not terrestrial television and that we're living in a fool's paradise that people are actually watching it. And the argument I'd make is that the demographic has switched, that the high value demographic actually has moved away uh, from terrestrial television in a very large way. Now, I don't think my media consumption is particularly unusual. Um, and I think that there are a couple of things that make me a relatively valuable customer. I'm an early tech adopter, um, I love gadgets, and I'm a frequent traveller. I fly pretty much every week. Um, without programmatic, I don't believe I can be targeted. Um, you can't get me in the, in the, in the Financial Times. Uh, you can't get me with Time magazine. You can't get me with CNN. I, I don't watch any of this stuff. Um, and I don't think that a lot of you are terribly different in the way that you consume media either. Um, without cross device, there's no way you could make sense of these six devices I'm using regularly. So it, it needs to make this level of, of, of uh, evolution as well. So basically the thought I'd like to sort of leave you with is that we live in an omni-channel world and one that only makes sense programmatically. So tomorrow um, at 11 a.m. we're going to be doing a workshop on programmatic. If you'd like to learn more about it, we're going to have things at varying different levels. We'll have a beginner stream, we'll have an intermediate stream, and we'll have some more um, sort of tactical stuff as well for people who are more used to the stuff. So please come along if you've got the opportunity. And thank you very much for your time. Oh, oh sorry, are there, are there any questions? I, if we, ha we have time. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Iseline and my question is, um, where do you think that out of home stands in this omnichannel world? Well, that's a good point. Um, I think that um, out of home is, is going to be with us forever. Um, I don't see a time that, that out of home is going to be something that isn't hugely valuable to us. Um, what I think is going to happen is I think that out of home is going to become more programmatically traded. Um, one thing I can't understand, and maybe I'm giving away a business idea here, is why don't billboards have cameras? Surely the software is not particularly difficult to count people. Um, so, it, I mean, in, in terms of valuing footfall, in terms of valuing those impressions, um, we could be buying uh, outdoor in a much more programmatic way, understanding the value and being able to price. Um, one of the things about programmatic that maybe people haven't given much thought to is programmatic gives us the ability to price media um, and value media in a way that we haven't been able to before. And I think that there's work to be done with Outdoor in terms of finding value and finding price, but I don't think the technology is particularly difficult and I don't think that, uh, and I think that increasingly we'll see um, more screen, uh, we already are seeing more screen stuff, but even if it's fixed, I still think that it can be sold programmatically. Anyone else? Oh, hello. Oh, we got a mic for you. Hi. How does a typical advertiser use programmatic, um, like in the life of what you have just shared? Okay. Well, just a, a typical advertiser. Um, so, okay, let's just go back to programmatic. Isn't a big shift in anything. Um, it's a workflow change. So we used to get on the telephone and we call someone up and to buy a piece of advertising. And the thing is that if we were buying for different clients, six, seven things from one different, um, you know, from one different publisher, we'd have to make six, seven calls. And we'd have to go through all of this time investment to do something as simple as buying advertising we've bought a million times before. What programmatic offers is just a better workflow. It's a digitization, just like there are no more paper airline tickets, uh, just like there are no more paper stocks, there won't be any more insertion orders. Um, advertising will just, you'll be able to go in and see what's available, see what's, um, you know, what the projection is of hitting your target, and then buy exactly what you're after. So it's just platform. Yeah, exactly. It's just, a, it's just really just a workflow improvement. Um, I mean, there, there's the targeting aspect to look at it as well, and 
you know, if we looked at it in the past where if we were trying to target women, for example, we could buy on a, on a you know, on Cosmopolitan or Elle or Marie Claire or something like that. But um, now we can actually go and buy that type of media, but we can specify, I want to use data to prove that it's a woman, and I want to have data to prove that this person has an interest, uh, you know, has actually has tried to consume content about something similar to what I'm selling. So it's worlds away. It's basically being able to improve the, uh, or just reduce the wastage in the way that you buy media. One more? Anyone? Oh, hello. Hi. On that uh, particular point you mentioned about measurability or programmatic, is mm -hmm. it the same as traditional, you know, advertising, clicks, impressions, or is it a lot more real? Okay. Well, you, you said clicks. I'm, I'm, I've, I've written things about clicks. I'm, I'm, I'm hugely against the idea of click through. Um, I, I think click through is actually possibly a toxic metric. Um, it, it, a click is basically, you know, it, it's, it's, there was a piece of work done, it's getting a little old now, um, but Quantcast did it. And what they found was that most of the people who clicked were either over 18, sorry, sorry, under 18 or over 80. Uh, they were the least economically engaged people in society. Um, so, yes, those metrics are still around and I wish they weren't. Um, but uh, some of them still haunt us to this day. Um, but we do things now, now we've got the opportunity to go a lot deeper and we can actually look at what the KPIs are for a campaign and we can design it around. So it could be downloads, um, if, you're, if it's, a, uh, yeah, it's an app that you're trying to promote, uh, it could be sales, it could be test drives, it could be um, the level of engagement on the landing site that someone's going to. And the thing is that these things can not just be measured, they can actually be taken back into the intelligence in the system and the AIs can use that to better understand how to buy the media on a second by second transaction basis. And are there any regulations around programmatic? I wish there was more. Um, there's, there's not a lot. Um, there are guidelines from people like the IAB and stuff like that. Um, Europe has done a fair bit to legislate around it, but that's got really to do with the use of data. Sorry, come over here where I can see you. Um, it, it's, it's got more to the use of data than it has to do with the way that we, um, the, the way that we actually buy or the way that we measure. Um, but measurement, um, yeah, one of the, there are some things that we need to do as an industry. We need to move away from toxic metrics like clicks. We need to move away from last click attribution because it's just stupid. Um, and the thing is that we're complicit in, in this bullshit because we keep, um, we keep selling it to clients even though we know it's wrong. Um, the main thing that we have to do is to break the habit ourselves and, and move into an age where we accept that, that, that more than one thing contributes to um, a sale happening, uh, that people are exposed to media and it's, it, it is basically a, a, um, uh, a cumulative effect of being exposed to media, not a singular effect that, that leads to uh, somebody buying. So we've known about the funnel and we've known about the stuff, but we only measure the last bit of the funnel. It's just, it, it's all a bit ludicrous. Does that help? Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, I think we're good. Thank you very much for your time and your patience. <laughs> <laughs>